Hey everyone, I'm coming to you from my kitchen table. I thought this would be an appropriate place to talk about what I wanted to share with you today. Um, today actually marks the beginning of the Passover festival. The Passover is a nearly week-long festival uh, that's part of one of seven sacred festivals in the Jewish calendar. And of course, the week culminates in the Passover meal. And the Passover meal was actually designed by God in the Old Testament. You can read all about this. And God said, I want you to celebrate it in this way because every time you celebrate it, I want you to call to mind specific historical events. So no matter what had happened in a given calendar year, the ups and downs, when people came to the Passover, that was the beginning of the Hebrew year, they were reminded of God's faithfulness, this story of their rescue from Egypt. And it was just this center point of their lives. And they could always look back to that moment and say, yes, God is powerful. He is faithful. He is good. Jesus comes along in Matthew chapter 26, and he gathers his apostles for a Passover meal. Now, a lot of us have read this passage countless times, but I want to point out that we read it kind of with our newer understanding already in place, but I want you to imagine what it was like to read it when Jesus was, was actually playing this out. Because these men that were surrounded, uh, that surrounded Jesus had celebrated the Passover their entire lives, and the script had been the same every single year. And then Jesus orchestrates this moment, he brings them into this room, and he begins to celebrate it with them. And I would imagine that much of it happens just like it was supposed to. But then you get to verse 26, and I want to read that uh, with you. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, now by the way, they were eating the Passover meal, and they had all known exactly what was happening and what was supposed to come, and what he was about to do was not supposed to come. Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. That was definitely not part of the script. You can imagine uh, the guys were looking at each other saying, What is going on? Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Now, there's all kinds of history here about covenants and forgiveness and animal sacrifice that we can't get into in a short video. But I just want you to know that what Jesus was doing was so far off script. He was completely re-engineering millennia-old traditions. Now, imagine some of you have traditions with the way that you celebrate, um, I don't know, Thanksgiving or Fourth of July or Arbor Day. And unless those things are done just in those ways, it almost probably feels like you haven't celebrated that holiday at all. And so when Jesus comes along and just completely reorganizes what this was all about, you can imagine it left them reeling a little bit, like what in the world is going on? But what Jesus was doing is he was saying that this fixed point in history is no longer God rescuing his people from Egypt. The fixed point in history that is the evidence of God's love is my death on the cross. That is the fixed point. And no matter what is going on in a person's life, they can always know that God's love is evidenced by that fact. I mean, that, that's incredible to think about. One of the things that this global pandemic is revealing is that a lot of us had our faith in a certain future. And so many of us are asking the question, when are things going to return to normal? When are we going to be able to go out to eat? When are we going to be able to see our friends? When are we going to be able to go to a movie theater? When are we going to be able to uh, enjoy non-essential activities again? And, and the thing is, we don't know. And it makes people so nervous and upset because they're saying that in some way, their sense of security and their sense of certainty was in the future. And Jesus is saying, it's never been about that. We've never been certain about our future, but we can be certain of God's faithfulness and his love and his power when we look to the cross. Nothing can change that. So I pray for us as a church family that we are digging deep into the well of compassion and generosity. Those things are certain, those things are true, and they will always be valuable. So I pray that as you think through this once a year celebration of the Passover, one that many of us Christians celebrate weekly, that you can think about the fact that our faith is not in our future, but our faith is a fixed point uh, in the past when Jesus Christ died on the cross. That is the centerpiece of our hope. We're gonna continue to explore um, 
uh, Christ and the final week and talk about uh, different elements that were taking place. But I just hope that we as Christians can understand that our certainty is in Christ and it's not ever been in anything else.